46 is brought to you by Smitty's Cards and Coins. Would you like to know what your collectibles are worth? Come by 2281 Postal Road, Unit 4, across from the post office. News is also brought to you by Assemblyman James Oscarson, the voice for veterans, seniors, and education, now and in the future. The conservative choice, fighting for your rights. Paid by the committee to re-elect James Oscarson. News is also brought to you by Lorinda Wickman for Nye County Commissioner, District 1, a qualified and dedicated professional who understands our challenges and is here to serve the people. Vote to re-elect Lorinda Wickman for Nye County Commissioner, District 1. Paid for by the supporters of Lorinda Wickman. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. On News 46, a candlelight vigil is held for the Orlando mass shooting victims. A truck crashes into the front of Radio Shack. And it's slow going at the polls on Election Day. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell. And Unet Gentry. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Tuesday, June 14th, 2016. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Yannette Gentry for News 46. Dozens gathered for a candlelight vigil last night in front of the Prump Party Supply Store on Highway 160 to honor and remember the victims of the Pulse nightclub terror attack in Orlando, Florida. The names of 48 of the 49 victims who died were read aloud. 53 more were injured in the deadliest mass shooting in our nation's history. You know, I was sitting in a meeting this morning at work and I couldn't focus and I didn't couldn't figure out why and I finally realized I was thinking about, you know, what happened in Orlando and um, just decided and text you actually and said, let's do a vigil. Are you in? And it kind of grew from there and had some signs made and had some Facebook posts and asked uh, Pastor Jim from Fidelis Christian Church to come out and, and just kind of preside over it um, and a couple other speakers. And here we are. In times like this, when people are in so much pain, it really helps to join together and kind of talk about uh, your feelings like that. Is that what we're going to be doing here? Absolutely, yes. And, um, you know, whether you uh, support the LGBT community or not, that's not what this is about. It's about human life. Um, and that's what was taken from a lot of families a couple days ago. With the amount of victims, we're talking about hundreds of families and the nation just mourning and the world mourning uh, for these victims. and. Uh, uh, just at the act of one person. Absolutely, it's it's very disturbing. Um, you know, I woke up I think at about 3.30 or 4.30 in the morning and read the CNN uh, alerts on my phone and just literally brought me to tears. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely awful to think of what these families have to be going through and, and the families with who still don't know, you know, they have family members in the hospital who they don't know what the outcome might be and it's just very tragic. When investigators arrived on the scene, they were welcomed by ringing cell phones of the slain as loved ones repeatedly called to check in. I can't imagine the desperation of the family members who hope beyond hope for an answer, for a familiar voice to pick up and say, I'm all right. And so I'm, I'm reminded in Psalm 97.10, it says, you who love the Lord hate evil, and friends, this is evil, and we should hate it. We should hate what happened. It is hard, and we need to recognize that all the people that we're killed. We're part of the queer community and that people want, that want to pass it off as just it being a terrorist attack and not admitting that these people were queer. Stop erasing us. It's a hard enough existing as it is. And thank you to Ryan Mucho for putting that event on. A crowdfunding campaign to support the Orlando Pulse shooting victims and their families has pulled in more than $3.4 million. The campaign is GoFundMe's largest ever, dwarfing the previous record of just over $2 million. The charity site was started in 2010. GoFundMe donated $100,000, which waived their transaction fee. The $3.4 million is very little when spread throughout all the families who are facing enormous expenses. If you would like to donate, you can find the Pulse terror attacks victims on the GoFundMe site on the web.
A truck crashed into the front of Radio Shack this morning while the business was closed. A vehicle versus structure accident occurred this morning in the Prump Valley Junction Shopping Center. Prump Valley Fire and Rescue and Nye County Sheriff's deputies arrived on scene to find a pickup truck that had crashed through the glass in front of Radio Shack. How the accident occurred is still under the investigation of the Nye County Sheriff's Office. However, two of the occupants inside the truck were mechanically entrapped. They were both extricated by Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue. No one was injured inside Radio Shack at the time of the accident. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Candidates and voters are anxiously awaiting tonight's results of the 2016 primary election. The polls opened at 7 a.m. this morning and will close at 7 p.m. tonight. We caught up with Nye County Clerk Sandra Merlino. There's not a lot on our ballot, unfortunately, so it's not bringing out a lot of people. But it has been steady, slow but steady. We haven't, we've always had a voter in here, at least at Bob Reed today. So it's not great, but at least people are coming out. What's the other polling location? Uh, it's the Prem Valley High School um, out on Mount Charleston. It's that old gym. And then, of course, we have them in the northern end of the county. We have them in Amargosa, Beatty, Round Mountain, and Tonopah. And so when will you be able to tally the vote? Well, unfortunately, we have to wait for some transports from Beatty and Amargosa into Pahrump and then from Round Mountain into Tonopah. So that takes a good hour and a half after the polls close. And then we actually have to shut down all this equipment and load it in the U-Haul before we can head to the office to start tallying. So we hope by 8.30 or 9 o'clock we will really start rolling and hopefully get everything done by 9.30 or 10. I'm always hopeful. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully we see some numbers. Um, and that includes also the early voting numbers that you'll yes. have at that time. Yes, yes. We'll tally those tonight as well after the polls uh, close. Let's talk about uh, the constant issue with the open and closed elections that uh, we keep hearing about. Why um, are you not allowed to vote for certain candidates if you're a certain party? Well, Nevada has what's called a closed primary. So unless you're of a major political party, you can't pr vote for the candidates in that office you know, a major political party office. I get a lot of complaints, um, and all we try to do is get the word out when people even register. We let them know, you know, if you register as a nonpartisan, you will not be able to vote for some of these statewide races or even some of our local county races when they're on. They're partisan offices as well. So it's... So you have to change over to who you would like to vote over their party and then change back if you, like, are nonpartisan. Absolutely. We... we tell people they are absolutely able to do that. They can just change their party for an election, change it back afterwards, and they can be whatever they want. There's a deadline for doing that, right? Yes. For all mail-in, it's a month prior, and then they can walk into the office two weeks prior to the election to change. So for more information, of course, they can call the Nye County Clerk's Office. Absolutely. And I have a website. If they go to the Nye County website, go to the Clerk's Office, I try to keep all the information on there. Early voting dates, um, absentee information, anything they need to know, I try to keep on there. And tonight, KPVM-TV will be having a live broadcast with the election results beginning at 8 p.m. with our own Vern Van Winkle. That's right. Can't I heard he might be streaming it, too. Oh, yeah, I believe so. Uh -huh. And if you haven't voted yet, 7 o'clock is the deadline. Get out there and vote. And we're inviting all the candidates, if they'd like to come up here to the station for the live broadcast, you can come up to KPVM-TV at 890 South Higley, and uh, Vern will have you on the live broadcast. That's right. So... Thank you so much for um, for uh, doing that, and um, and what a wonderful night it's going to be. We're going to find out all the primary election results, That's and right. uh, we're so glad that uh, Vern is putting this on. Yes. We'll be back in just a moment.